Still spooling. Still, there we go. We're live. It's Selection Sunday from AJ's. It's March 17th. St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you and your family. Um, Adam was kind enough to open his doors to me, and, and uh, some fellow boilers have gathered around a little bit to talk a little bit about where our boilers will be playing, when they'll be playing, who they'll be playing, and some other interesting notes that the uh, selection committee gave us. Um, so with me, I got I got Todd Singer across the table. I got Maury, who's known by uh, Mohill93. My dad, he's live in the studio here at AJ's. So um, a lot of fun, though. So Purdue is, is the number one seed in the Midwest. The, the fact that they're number one, nobody's surprised by it. We'll talk a little bit about it. Were they the number one overall? I haven't heard yet because it's a little tough to hear live in the in the restaurant in the store here um but i'm going to talk about all of it before i do it let me thank my two sponsors first underneath this shirt i've got I, I really do i really do have a home field apparel shirt i got a hammer down one you can buy it right now on their site and when you enter boiled 23 at checkout you'll get 15 percent off and also of course of course i've got to thank my pals at aj's right now if you're if you're nearby, if you're near AJ's, come over get a uh, get a boiled sports magnet. Um, uh, thanks to Adam and company, um, we do have a couple to give out. So um, what's he get? Thumbs up. Okay, I don't know. Adam was checking the audio to see. If, you guys can tell me in the comments if we're working. Oh, he already did it. He did it there. So, but thanks to AJ's. Uh, if you're on campus, if you're at Ross Aid, if you're at Mackey Arena. Make a beeline towards the fire station, then turn left, and you're going to see AJ's, okay? You can do like my dad and I, you can get some of the pretzels, and I'll prove it right now. You, you get some of these. Have some of the pretzels. I love the uh, Chipotle Ranch. It's amazing. Cheddar cheese sauce, also good. And get them a pint like my dad. My dad actually got a pony, uh, a, a little uh, little pitcher, too. So um, before you go there, head over to eataj's.com, order ahead, get your, get your food ready. It'll be hot. Adam and the good folks here. Well, Jordan, maybe one of the other one of the other great waiters, waitresses, they'll hook you up. The staff is immaculate. The food is impressive. You can't go wrong. AJ's Burgers, Beef and Beer. All right, so here we go. Let's talk a little bit about the tournament, shall we, boys and girls? All right, so Purdue gets a pretty favorable draw. Does everybody agree with that? All right, all right. So we've got we got Montana State or Grambling right away. Uh, Adam. He said, this is the most interesting matchup in Dayton, and I don't think there's any doubt about that. Good news, bad news, right? This is the whole thing. If you're a Purdue fan, we all thought there was kind of a formula for things that could happen, things that could, could make a good run feasible, right? Last year, we all got, we all got bitten by this, and it, and it shook my confidence, quite honestly. Um, so this year, Purdue is in a much better position from a personnel standpoint. You've got experience at guards. You've got a guy who can break down a defense, go right into the teeth of it with, uh, with the way Lance Jones drives. It's been a real difference maker. And he's a guy that doesn't have the conscience. He keeps shooting. Also, we've seen very good things from Mason Gillis. He, 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 will, he will take the shot this year that he wouldn't. He won't pump, pump fake, pump fake, pump fake. He'll keep taking the shot. I think that's going to be huge. Now, who do you want more, Montana State or Grambling? That's up for you to decide. I don't think it matters to me. Last year we thought Purdue played maybe the lowest rank, according to Power Rankings, team to ever play in the NCAA tournament, and they found a way to beat our Boilermakers. So, <clears throat> like I say, this is redemption week right now. Purdue needs to get to the second weekend of the tournament for anybody, any Purdue fan to take a deep breath. I don't think there's any doubt about that. But before they get to that second weekend, they're going to have to get past Utah State or TCU. Now, I mean, if I look at <laughs> if I look at the problems here, number one, uh, the the Mountain West wanted, they were putting a hashtag uh, campaign, uh, six bid Mountain West. I think they said six bid MW, I think was their hashtag. Well, they got their six big bids. Conversely, the Big Ten only got five bids, all right, and then um, that's a good conference. Utah State was knocked out by San Diego State, another really, really good team. And the other interesting subplot, I told Todd this, that uh, TCU for me, with uh, Jamie Dixon as coach, so any team, any team that has Jamie Dixon as coach is a lot like Purdue under Gene Cady. They play well in the season, they squeeze everything they can out of a lineup, and then tournament time, they tend to fizzle. Look back at Pitt specifically, but they also do it. TC. They also do it. Have done it at his other. I think TCU is the only other stop. Is that right? 
Okay. But that's what I, I've always thought Jamie, Di- Jamie Dix was a lot like Gene Cady in that way. Some other interesting things coming out of, uh, out of this region. Of course, for me, the hated uh, Gonzaga Bulldogs. Let me play in McNeese State. And McNeese State, if you don't know who they are, they're a team that's been good all year, and they've got LSU's old coach at the helm. If you want to pick an upset, I think that's a good place to start. McNeese over Gonzaga seems like a good one. That team can play well, and I'm, I may be showing a little bit of my hand. You know I don't bet on the games, but I do I do play bracket challenges. That's, that's one that I'm definitely picking. And then you'll have either Kansas or Samford. If you're paying attention, you know Samford is a team your Boilermakers played earlier in the season. What was the differential? Do you remember? A 53-point differential. Purdue over Samford. Uh, at Mackey Arena back in December, right? Yeah. Yeah, and if you don't, another thing, there's, there's a lot of teams that Purdue played sprinkled through this bracket. And the reason is Purdue, even the, 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 the easy games weren't so easy. Teams like Moorhead State that Purdue handled in the second half, IU st- uh, struggled against them. Moorhead State is in. Jared, if you're watching, congratulations, my friend. Um, it's a good, that's a good thing to see them in there. One thing that may upset a lot of Purdue fans because we all have a um, kind of a vested interest. They're nearby. Is Indiana State, they're out. They uh, didn't end the season quite as strongly as they started, and they were in the middle, and they uh, their bubble burst. Uh, if we look at some other sub-stories, um, Virginia is in a plan. Colorado and Colorado State, both in plans in Dayton. Um, and those are those are noteworthy things. Whenever you see teams that, like Colorado State, if you remember back, go in your way back machine and look at December, Colorado State was one of the best teams in America for about a two, three week period in December. They just looked great. Somebody here in the comments earlier, I'm gonna go and revisit these in a second. They'll be in a little bit different order because obviously I can't review stats today. But somebody said, this is Maui V 2.0, right? Because Purdue has a chance to go through, do what they're expected to do, play some good teams, bring home some hardware, obviously. Um, but Colorado State, I think, was one of those teams that was playing really well in during that early December run. Um, but they're a good team. They're a good team. If we look further ahead, the other teams Purdue could possibly play, Tennessee could be on the in the second weekend, Creighton, and then, of course, the sense of humor by the selection committee shows up, St. Peter's coming out of there. Uh, I think we were all in agreement. We kind of wanted to see that St. Peter's as a 16 for Purdue to play right away. But what the selection committee did, regardless of what you think of the selection com- committee, what they did is they showed Purdue a ton of respect. And I haven't seen if they were the number one overall. My college roommate said it looks like a number one overall type bracket. I tend to agree with that. Um, that road. I don't like to say this almost, but who gives a damn about jinxing anything? We've had the worst case scenario already hit us between the eyes. I'd call that road manageable at very minimal. Um, do you, do you, are you afraid of Kansas? I'm not. Are you afraid of Tennessee? Purdue's already beaten them. Are you afraid of Creighton? Are you afraid of Montana State, Grambling, Utah State, TCU? Nope. Like we all say, like this whole group came into to agreement. I'm afraid of Purdue more than I'm afraid of these other teams. And if Purdue can come and play the game that we know they're capable of playing, holy moly, could we be in for a fun next couple of weeks. I think, like, when I look at just the upside, right, the expectation of what might be, I, I can't I can't say I've ever been more of a believer in the ability of the team. Not necessarily do I believe this team's going to run through right now because they've got something to prove to everyone. I, I hate to be a doubting Thomas. I hate to do it. As I've gotten older, I've become more of one. But what I will say is I just don't remember a more capable Purdue, a more well-rounded Purdue. And if you guys can, can I mean, I remember, of course, the Baby Boys. I remember the Three Amigos. Um, I remember I was on campus when Glenn Robinson and the, and the pups were there. Uh, if you go back to 80, we were talking, my dad was at the game in Indianapolis when uh, Purdue went to the Final Four last time. That was a very good team. That's Joe Barry Carroll and company. But I can't remember a team that was better built for a tournament. So we'll see what they're made of. Point guard play. Let's look at that. This is something everybody always talks about. There are certain things that really work in the tournament. Veteran point guard play. Smart point guard play makes a huge difference. This is part of the reason, or the, maybe the main reason, I was so worried about seeing a healthy Braden Smith next week. When I say healthy, I mean completely healthy. 
Braden Smith is important. I said it a couple weeks ago. I got somebody to scoff at me. Braden Smith is as important as Zach Eady, in my opinion. And we can we can kibitz about this a little bit. Nobody knows more about where everybody's supposed to be at one time. Nobody makes the thing go more than Braden Smith. He's absolutely essential, and good point guard play always makes the team move through the tournament. Now, here's a question. You guys can you can shout out if you want to, too. COVID stuff is still happening. Old teams still exist, right? Purdue is clearly not an old team. They are more aged than they were last year, but they are not like Houston. They are not like Illinois. They don't have a bunch of 24-year-olds. You know, They don't have the physical presence of um, a San Diego State last year or even an FAU, right? So is that going to still be the factor that helps teams ram through the tournament? It feels like it could be very possible. Those big, strong guards. We watched what Illinois did versus Wisconsin, especially down the stretch. They wear teams down because they're men playing boys, literally. One thing that has been really interesting about Purdue this year, though, when they played Tennessee, which is a team with big, strong guys, and Arizona, which is a team with really, really veteran, good, skilled guards, Purdue showed out. Right? Fletcher Lawyer, who's the guy who's, like, I, I get, got on him for his weight. I can make fun of his weight because I'm on the other side. All right? I'm over 200 pounds. Fletcher Lawyer, who's a foot taller than me, is probably 175 pounds. I don't know if either of us, maybe. maybe. I don't know if either of us should be bragging about that. So the whole point is, though, Fletch is big game Fletch, right? And now the lights are brighter and we're ready to go. This is going to be fun. Let's see some other neat, interesting subplots that I made a note of. Interesting games that I look at that are non-Purdue related, but they're our neighbors, if you will. First one that I would say that really got my attention is Northwestern versus, uh, Northwestern versus FAU in the first round. Holy moly, uh, that could be fun. If you, don't, if you haven't watched FAU since last year, they seem to have... I don't know if you say take it easy. Maybe they had their eye on. This is what Purdue's season could have been, right? When you have a team that has that sort of tournament run, the next year it's hard to keep your foot on the gas, right? Purdue, there were high expectations, but there was also this dark cloud over their heads, and they found a way to stay motivated and play good basketball all the way through the season. FAU simply did not do that. They've got, I believe, all the moving parts back from last year. Yeah, all the, all the really good ones are there. The kid from Gary's still there. The big center's still there. And it didn't matter. They lost games they simply shouldn't have. So will the, will the, switch, uh, the switch be flipped right away versus Northwestern? I wouldn't want any part of them. But I also wouldn't want any part of Northwestern. So that's why I like that game so much, right? Um, so FAU would play UConn second round if both teams go to seed. Holy crap, UConn. That's a tough draw. Uh, and believe me, I got no love for UConn. None at all. I think Hurley's an absolute madman. Okay? That's a game you don't want a part of. And that one might say more than anything that UConn wasn't the number one seed truly in the tournament committee's mind. Another one that I thought was interesting, speaking of number ones, Houston plays Nebraska in the second round potentially. Nebraska has shown us they're a pretty damn good team. Nebraska can go on streaks. Tominaga, who everybody loves. I love him. Mast, who can absolutely go off. Those two guys, sorry about the noise, but we are really, the people are having a good time next, next move over. Um, but Nebraska and Houston is one that could be awesome because you have strength versus, versus strength, defense versus offense. That could be a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Um, uh, Illinois, okay, here's another interesting note, I thought. Um, Illinois probably got a seed bump with their good run through the Big Ten tournament. It's tough to see that they didn't, right? It's tough to see that because they, of course, dropped the game late to Purdue. Maybe that shows the respect for Purdue. But Illinois got a bit of a seed bump, and at the same time, I would argue Wisconsin didn't get a seed bump. That's what it feels like to me. This is the mystery of how the selection committee works and why I don't give a damn about the Big Ten tournament. Part 700 by Boiler Dow. Um, another game that is interesting, Wisconsin versus uh, James Madison. If that one doesn't get your attention, you haven't been watching much basketball. James Madison, James Madison, they beat Michigan State at Michigan State. At the Breslin Center, they, they got them. And that was back, I would say, Michigan State had a lot of confidence at that point. It was dashed that night. So Wisconsin, who, who doesn't want to see them lose? Gets to play JMU. Yeah, <laughs> bunch of goons. Yeah, right on. 
Um, so, another little piece of information. You probably already know this if you're paying attention. Purdue will be playing Friday, Sunday in Indianapolis. Do we have that? You, the no, no tip off. Let's see if in the back. Nothing. No tip off times yet at all. That's a lot of fun. So, so we're set, guys, girls, friends, people who love to be entertained. This is going to be a good week, hopefully. I feel like it should be a good week. Let me go. Let's look at comments right now. Thanks to everybody for tuning in. Um, it's not a post game, and like I like I said to these guys, I didn't really say this, but. It's all about quality, not quantity. We got some great, great BSers here in the, <laughs> right across from me. Is that is that right thing to say? Is that yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> there you go, there you go. And I am at, I gotta tell you, I've got the honor here. I've got the I've got the honor here. This is awesome. Maury and Todd are both boilermakers by choice, and I always talk about how incredible it is to, to run into one of these gluttons for punishment, these sadists. <laughs> incredible. Thank you for being here, gentlemen. My dad across the way, uh, he chose Peru a long time ago, and then he brainwashed me and effectively brainwashed my son, and we have generations of just pain and torment. But we're all here together meeting today. Together. Exactly. We're banding together. Dick Stillwagon says, he, he's here first, he says, Three teams we've already beaten in our region. That's a very, very good point. Uh, you've got, let's see, help me out with this. You've got Tennessee. Who am I missing? Huh? Samford. See, Gonzaga, it's funny. You guys know I hate Gonzaga. That game got smaller and smaller in my rearview mirror with them having the disappointing season. They're still a good team. They still got a good coach. They have, they have. And... Uh, they got good size, so. Uh, but I like that. I think that's a good thing. I think it's hard if we, if you guys want to go back in the way back machine and think about some tournament matchups of the past where a team Purdue played early in the season, then they had to play in the tournament. The one I always remember, sadly, is when the Three Amigos got knocked out of the tournament by Mitch Richmond. Purdue beat Kansas State by 42. It was a lot that season in the pre-con. And then they lost to him um, in that, that horrible, sad day. Honestly, one of the worst, one of the worst days being a Boiler fan for me. Just I was, I was young. I was right in that middle school crosshair. Too, too sad. All right. Um, so Matt Border says Maui invite 2.0. You're the guy I was referencing. Very, very good, very good uh, point right there. Just like referencing what Dick said. Adam says audio check is good. Adam's now here, so we're in a time machine. Uh, Andy Day, and I noticed that. Thank you for going checking that. So yeah, he walked around the block. Uh, okay. Okay. Awesome. Very good. Very good. Um, yeah. Oh, good. Everybody, uh, pick pick up pick away and give me your comments. Who you got winning the whole thing? Purdue over UNC. So you think UNC? That'd be kind of a magical run for that team. They're, they've been up and down, hot and cold this year. Uh, oh. It, oh. Let's, let's not discount. While Purdue has been in the top three the entire season, it still would be, it still would be magical for all of us for them to get to, to Phoenix. Full stop. Full stop. That's four-game winning streak. For those of us keeping score at home, let's do this again. Eight-game winning streak. Loss. Eight-game winning streak. Loss. Nine-game winning streak. Loss. Six-game winning streak. Loss. What happens now? Just need six. Like Just six little victories. That's it. That's all we're asking for. So, yeah. Um, third number one overall is weird. What does that mean? Third number one overall is weird. What's that mean? Third number one overall is, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. In the face. Yeah. Yeah. We really, Purdue really took it on the chin, right? So that's, so they're saying, so that's what Andy's telling me is that they released it that Purdue is the third best um, number one. But I would say, I would disagree with the, with the thesis there simply because the, the path Purdue got seems pretty respectful. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Math guys. I need math guys. Uh, Andy, did you miss the clicking? You did. But it's here. There you go. There's some clinking. Today we got root beer in the uh, the pint glass with the magnet at the bottom. So that rant got my voice very, very 
Last beat. Okay. Um, Mia Boomverse says, love the draw. Got tickets for Indy. Excellent. To quote Lance Jones, let's do the damn thing. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Um, let's see. Jim Ron says, I was just at AJ's. You know Jim Ron? Should I? Did he yell boiled when he came in is the question. He did not. He did not. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, we, we need that. Yell boiled when you come in to AJ's. Um, Jim Ron says, great food. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Adam P says, we're going to Phoenix. Doesn't matter if our number one seed is the third. We're playing in the Midwest. We've seen many of these teams already. Happy Sunday, Dowd, says Nolan 23. Uh, Seth Davis, Clark Kellogg, Jay Wright all have Purdue in their final four. All right. I don't know if it's a good or bad thing. I don't know how to feel about anything. I'm in a glass box of emotion. Brock Stepler says, uh, this is what we have all been waiting for. Lock it in, boilers. The lock in, boilers. Right on. T. Rick says, Montana State and Grambling both have junior senior guards. Here we go. Junior senior guards, 6'4 and the 6'7. How do they keep drawing teams with giant guards in round one? I, I think what we're seeing is it's not so much it's not so much the committee doing us any, you know, doing us dirty. It's just this is kind of how teams are built right now. Peru is very much countercultural, right? It's not so much that just that, that Smith is small, it's that lawyer is these guys are true sophomores. Will they look different in two years if they're still at Purdue? Yeah, they will. They will. Um, I would love Lawyer to hit the protein powder this offseason. But let's hope he gets to wait, a, what, four weeks until we talk about the offseason. Even then, if, it, if it's that far away from us, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say take, take, a, take a few weeks off, Fletch. And then, and then, wait room. So uh, Jason D says six bid Mountain West is greater than nine Windiana. Yes, I agree. That is a much better hashtag campaign. Uh, Karen Gerlach says McNeese is dangerous, and I agree, Karen. Very, very dangerous. I think, I hope Karen and I, our spat is over. I hope we've moved on. I feel better already. I feel there's a lot of healing on this side, Karen. Hope you feel the same way. I feel like we're united again. It's excellent. Um, let's see. Nolan 23 says TCU is Ken Palm 33rd. Uh, Michigan State, for reference, is what, 21? Right in there? 22. 22, exactly. Uh, Nolan 23 says Jay Billis. Uh, Says it's a favorable draw, favorable draw for Purdue. I don't care what Jay Billis says about anything. I'm going to be really frank about that. Jay Billis has done himself no favors in my mind, and he didn't start from a very lofty spot to begin with this year. Uh, Utah State's a 48, according to Ken Palm. Noam's doing some some research. I love this. Um, uh, Andy Day says, "Oh no, there's a Jay, there's a curse of Jay Billis. I feel like there should be." Uh, just every time you have to listen to Jay Billis talk, it's a curse to you. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Uh, safety first. Safety first! We got excla exclamation points. Says, love the draw. Agreed. Brent Williams says, UConn's draw looks pretty tough. And I completely agree. I didn't dig super deep in there. But what would they, who would they have if they get through FAU? It gets no better. Auburn has one. They're like Houston defensively, right? That's a heart. Aren't they? they're, 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 Really? Okay, so that's funny because the Auburn teams have passed, right? They've been they've used that physicality because they're always big. Okay, I just kind of assume because in previous years, like I haven't watched them play. In fact, this year, probably because they've been buried. To me, the story in the in the SEC, you've seen Alabama play that exciting brand of basketball. Um, yeah, 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 they're good, but they're physically. That's another team that has big guards. I think. We will find this over and over and over. Most teams in the dance have big guards. Most successful teams. Uh, hold on a second. <clears throat> Jay says, uh, we gotta, we got to play pissed with the amount of disrespect we're getting. Now, here's the thing. Matt Painter is best as a coach, in my opinion, when his teams have a chip on his shoulder and when they are underestimated. Now, does he really feel that? Still being a number one seed? Does he still have the cloud hanging over him from last year like we all do? Like every Purdue fan does? I, I hope so. I hope so. Um, like I said, I would hope that they all have to watch at least an abridged version of that FDU game. Every single one of them. Remember, Matt said you got to stew in it. Got to sit in it. Got to sit in it. And he's right. Just like a baby in the diaper, gotta sit in it. 
and it's just like that. It's putrid. But there's a chance to work a little bit of that off. All right. Um, the lion says, uh, favorite AJ's item. Okay, that's a really good question. And uh, pretzels. That's my dad's favorite by far. Huh? Mac and cheese bites. These are these are neck and neck. I love the waffle fries with the Chipotle ranch. There's something magical that happens there. What's yours? Buffalo burger. I can. Yeah, Buffalo Blue. This is a this is one of the burgers that looks like it could defeat me. I'll be honest. Like some of the burgers I see them, I'm like, oh, that's this is. Well, the spice and the size together. I'm like, that's a, this is this is gonna pack a wallop. Get get your big boy pants on. Let's go. So yeah, I, I like the beef. Um, so I don't know. There's a lot of things. And if you haven't tried, tell me uh, what, what's the dessert item? Uh, the give me. I want to. Huh? Funnel cake sticks. They would be there too. Have the funnel cake sticks. Do yourself a favor. They're absurd. They're delicious. All healthy. Uh, Adam Adam has done his best to to draw the calories and fat out of such items. So you wouldn't know it when you taste them, but put it in another place. Put it in another place. It's hidden in a root beer, ironically enough. So yeah, no, a lot of good, a lot of good choices. Get to AJ's if you can. Uh, Steve Kendall says, "Look good in your green." I hope my fellow Irish lads in the in the crowd, Irish ladies, are wearing their green. If you're not, well, you get to punch them in the nose. Is that what the? I think that's the way it works. Who's <laughs> Hook and hold them. I love it. Who's Johnny says, I love our job. I have a great way to the final four. The Well Ministry says Purdue is the only team that can beat Purdue. Again, this is this is a smart, wise way to look at it. Turnovers are the key. I agree. I agree with that assessment. Very, very good. JL says, very favorable draw for matchups. Execute, execute as a unit. Take care of the ball. Finish the job. We saw a different version of Purdue. The last time we saw our Boilermakers. And you could argue many different things. Were they just kind of saying, okay, let's get through this game healthy. We heard Zach Eady say he was bothered and scared when he saw Smith go down. Was that Purdue team just saying, hey, it's okay. Our focus is right there. Let's, let's get there first. I don't know, because I saw more lackadaisical passes than I've seen all season in that game. So... That's what I'm thinking. I'm going to spin it that way. You guys can have it your way to whatever you want. Um, Jim, Jim Huguenard says, good draw. Alfred Dowd is across the table from me. He says uh, he is more handsome in person. Wow. Wow. He can, across the table, a guy that sees me literally multiple times a week, all the time, and he's known me for a little while. That's a very nice compliment, though. Solar says, Grambling State won uh, the last 17 of their last 20. Very, very good. The Take that with a grain. Uh, take that with a grain. That conference uh, is always top-heavy. When I say top-heavy, it's usually two teams that are good, and then the drop-off is massive. So that said, if Purdue takes anybody lightly, <laughs> I mean, what the hell? Uh, I don't believe they're going to. Uh, Judith Johnson says, feeling encouraged by all this. Same. Karen Gerlach says, three of four CBS selection show commentators pick Purdue the final four. Uh, Steve Kendall says, turn down the crowd noise. I would love to, but there are people overjoyed in the next booth. And it, we got to see as Purdue got their, got their picks, got their draws, and other people, there's a different group in that, in that booth. And they love the food. They, do, they love the food. They're a very happy bunch of them. Huh? They were cheering, yeah, the different things. We had different subplots, and everybody was cheering. It was fun. A lot of fun to be here. Last year, I was here, and I, it was poor timing. It was spring break. And so I was here with LBD. And his friend Jared, who's going to Moorhead State next year, and it was it was it was a subdued environment. Jake was here. Huh? Jake was here. He was just kind of walking around, right? And Jake is like uh, Kaiser Sose. You don't know if he really exists. Yes, or if he's mad at you, he may be. He may have been mad at me for as long as he's known me. Who isn't? I'm mad at me right now. All right. <laughs> Brian Feldman says, I feel optimistic compared to last year. Hope Painter fires him up. Uh, he admitted he did not last year. Let's go, boys. I haven't heard that, so that's, that's a good nugget. Um, I'm sure there's been press stuff already I've missed. Um, let's see who else. Let's see. I want to get. Oh, wow. I just lost all my comments. Okay. Came back. Uh, Maniacally Steve. Says checking in. I'll be in Indy next weekend for family stuff. Gonna try to make the game. My guess is this is a hard ticket. 
I haven't even looked at it yet. Um, expensive ticket. Um, I would love to be at that game, uh, or those games. Those games. Love to be at those games. I was not. Um, yeah, Ryan Klipsch says mac and cheese bites. Mac and cheese bites. Um, there you go. They're getting some votes here. Um, yeah. Uh, T. Rick says give this man some likes. Still the best Purdue pot out there. God bless you. Thanks. Do it because we're in the same position. Love this. Love this team. Uh, Carol Panda says Wisconsin versus JMU is a sleeper game of all time. Carrot Panda. Sorry. Carrot Panda, not Carol Panda. A little respect on the name. Uh, Millen23 says worst seats in the field house right now are. Make a guess. Don't look. Worst seats in the field house right now are how much money? Good guess. 500? Four? 275. You win. $300. $300. Good guess. The worst seats. I am, uh, yeah. Sold! Uh, Carl Haroro says, if I were running practice this week, there would be stops every 20 minutes or so to watch FDU last year. That's a way to do it. Go the aversion therapy. I like it. <laughs> no blinking! Uh, when, when will the, when, 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 when will the thrill says, tell Adam hi from Will and Emily at home. All right. Okay, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Ryan Clip says, uh, wild year, only one team from the state made the tourney. Really interesting there. <clears throat> and it's the team that owns the state. The Purdue state, in fact. I love that point. It's a very weird year. Butler backed their way out of the season. IU played the middle. They were awful. Sure, Woodson's still trying to figure out how many would they have won if Xavier Johnson was playing. I'm going to guess it would have been similar. Bad news. I said to my dad, you are playing roulette with Xavier Johnson. He'll give you a good game. He may give you two good games. Third game, he's punching a guy in the groin in the face. This is the beauty of Xavier Johnson being on your team. Uh, let's see. Uh, Esteban Garcia says possibilities of seeing a second weekend McNeese versus Sanford. Sanford. I love it. Let's go. You know what? There, this is what's happened the last couple years, right? It's not just one Cinderella gets through. It's multiple, right? So, yeah, that's the one I want the Cinderellas going through. I, I'll take when that. Two Cinderellas meet. Yeah, what is that? What, do they just point at each other like the Spider-Man yeah, meme? Cinderella, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Jim Ron says AJ's. Uh, Carl Herrero says Purdue is the Indiana University. Word. Uh, hey, I want to say something, guys. Uh, this has been fun. I think we're about done today. Um, thanks to AJ's for hosting. Thanks to Adam specifically. He's, he's the most beautiful hostess in all of the land. If you if you haven't met Adam, you are going to be struck by his beauty. <clears throat> um, it's incredible. He's over there fluttering his eyelashes at me. Look at that guy go. All right, yeah. So... Huh? Talk about a real Cinderella. Exactly. There's your Cinderella. She's beautiful. All right. Um, Frailhammer says, do we know what sessions... What's that say? Still no times. Okay, so we still don't know the tip-offs. Um, yeah. 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 you got to be on it, Todd. So, All right, guys. So thanks to everybody for tuning in. If you're live, really appreciate it. Nearly 300 of you guys and girls coming in live. That's awesome. Uh, I think last year it was four of us. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But this year has been, it, huh? Yeah, 40, 40. Um, uh, let's see. Need to be versus glad you're logged on. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Thanks for being here all season. Been a growth year for us here at Boiled Sports. That's a fun thing to see. If you go back and look, you guys, if you were here live the whole season, hats off to you. That's awesome. Uh, you've been here since the beginning, but the growth has been great. With the growth has come some, I'd say, growing pains. You've had some people. There's been a little more friction than we've had in the past, but that's all good. That's all good. Thanks for a great regular season. Now we are officially to what we have all been waiting for for a year. Yeah, and here comes that train down the track. Let's go. Hammer down, boys and girls. God bless you. Ken, keep fighting. All right, live from AJ's. Let's go. See ya. It's good. <laughs>